has now been well over a month. I've managed to get a certain movie out of my head. Most people have been rather respectful of my opinions and have supported me through this controversial decision of my YouTube career. Oh yeah, and I've apparently been on YouTube for over five years now. Jesus, time flies really quickly. So, I've done everything on my current list, I gave my viewers what they wanted to see, and now I'm home alone for over three weeks. Three weeks of peace and quiet. What can I do in the meantime? Should I 100% again draw something for DeviantArt? Try and lose some of this winter weight? Oh, I know! I'll review more of my nostalgic videotapes that no one else has ever watched. Video memories was already taken. Well, that's a logo. That blast at the beginning jumped me a bit as a kid, but it's quite good. Oh, and did you know that this logo would eventually transition into the VCI logo? Remember when I said that this logo was creepy? Well, according to what's left of the scare factor from CLG Wiki, it's high to nightmare. Yeah. <clears throat> the ominous nature of the dark background, creepy music, gigantic VCI text, and long period of silence with the logo can be a source of bad dreams for more than a few. And this logo has given more than a few people goosebumps. And the fact that the logo zooms out really close doesn't help. Well, at least I never found the Two Entertain logo creepy. A simple Microsoft PowerPoint transition from the tape's logo to the first show. And now, let us all rise for the Nostalgia National Anthem. <laughs> He whistled to some cows, but the cows didn't reply. Never mind, said Thomas, they're busy with their breakfast. Yeah, it is best for them to have their breakfast. Otherwise, they'll either be grumpy as hell all day, or will crash through a fence, slide down a hill, and end up on the railway line. Hello, Bertie. Care for a race today? But all Bertie could say was, Ouch! That's another hole in the road. I can't believe I made a hole in the wall reference in that redub I made years ago. Why is that cringy piece of shit one of my most popular and most beloved videos on my channel right now? The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails? You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. I don't think there was an explanation as to why the tar delivery was delayed, though it is something that I kind of answered in my read-up. 
how many more times am I going to reference that shitty video? Can't I reference something else? Like, um... It's too bad. Percy goes to work at the harbour and I do his job here, there and everywhere. Oh, I know. The fact that this was Michael Angelis' second time narrating this episode and six other episodes. Bad luck, Percy. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Take that! Oh, run the trot. Just you wait. We'll show you. Take that! Oh, groaned the trucks. Just you wait, we'll show you. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. Honestly, I prefer the second version of those narrations. If I grew up listening to the first take, along with missing music, I'd be... Different somehow. Danger lay ahead. Now for our plan, giggled the trucks. Go faster, go faster. Slow down, called Thomas's driver. Why were the points pointed towards the pond? The points were right at the top of the hill. How many signalmen on this railway have sleeping on the job syndrome? Thomas remembered about the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. That's strange, said Edward. A truck full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Why was the tar sent to Wellsworth? Why wasn't it delivered straight to Thomas's branch line? Who delivered the tar? How come said engine is suddenly forgetful for one episode? Why can't I ever stop asking questions like this? Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The toad, who was looking forward to a ride home, noisily agreed. Yeah, he could move into that muddy ditch in Vickerstown. Did you know that this was the first I ever saw of anything featuring Sooty? Yeah, the first and only time I saw Sooty for years was from one episode of the sequel series. And the same goes to Rainbow. I didn't know that was a continuation of the original series either. But with that said, I still liked this episode. They'll be fun along with the terrible fall. Just you wait and see. Not to respect the little five-year-old bear for being a hand puppet and all, but this is the most movement and expressions Sooty, Sweep, Sue, and little cousin Scampy have ever displayed. Until the animated series. Hey, ho, it's Sooty and Ho. Everybody say hello! There's Sooty and Sweep, a panda called Sue, and little cousin Scampy too. Matthew isn't even animated in the opening. Well, he isn't entirely absent. I mean, he is the one singing the song. And it's a really good song, by the way. Oh, hello there! Hey, am I glad to see you! And there he is, the best presenter of the Sooty series. I mean, nothing against his father, Harry Corbett, but Matthew here is the one I have watched the most and the one I have enjoyed the most. I can't get over how silly we were. We forgot to tell you that we were moving, didn't we? Anyway, I'm jolly glad that you managed to find us. What do you mean? I've never seen you before. And don't worry, because we are all here. Sooty, Sweet, Sue, Little Cousin Scampy, we've all moved up here, lock, stock and barrel, to the north of England. Has anyone else noticed a pattern with the names of these puppet characters? All of their names begin with S. <laughs> S is for subtle. Also, am I the only one in the country who finds their names weird and random? Sooty? Sweep? Sue? Scampy? Why would they name one of them after a shrimp? Or in my eyes, fish nuggets? And what, I hear you ask, are we doing exactly? Well, we've got a shop. Actually, I inherited it from a very distant auntie. Explanations! Matthew! <laughs> Where on earth are you? It's alright, Sue. I'm here, I'm here. Oh, and I'm not alone, by the way, because uh, we've got company. What? Oh, goodness me! 
Oh, hello, everybody. It's so nice to see you all, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even though all of this is scripted, pre-recorded, and isn't filmed in front of a live children audience, they still keep pointing and talking to the camera as if the audience is interacting with them. Why is it this sort of thing bothers me in stuff like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Dora the Explorer, and Thomas Season 22, but yet it never bothers me when Sooty does it? We were really worried, weren't we, Matthew? What, you mean about them not finding a suit? Yes! Why would they think the children might not know where they are? I mean, Sooty and Co. was broadcast on CITV, the exact same channel where they've shown the previous series, The Sooty Show. And besides, there must have been plenty of promotions advertising the new series, right? What's, what's the matter, Sooty? You feeling homesick? But Sooty, this is your home. You're sick of it. The old ones are the best ones. <laughs> What's wrong with Sooty? Well, he's a bit upset, that's all. <laughs> Why? Well, we've just moved house, haven't we? <laughs> yes, and sometimes moving to a new place can be a little bit upsetting if you're sensitive and settling. My 11-year-old self can really relate to this. I was quite upset and confused moving house and to a different town. Me and my family didn't have any problems with schools and such, but still. Here I am, looking after Sooty, giving him support. And what are you giving him? <laughs> you could give him a lick of your bone? What? I'd honestly hate to find out what type of bone that is, or where Sweep got it from. <laughs> Should have given him a chicken bone. It's to cheer Sooty up. <laughs> well, well, yes, but... Uh, oh, I mean, come but... along, Matthew. <laughs> It's just a little reminder of the old days. What's something to cheer up the poor little chap? Oh, just a little reminder of the old days. Mm. Something to cheer up the poor little chap. We just heard what Sue said. Go on then, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling happier now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. This whole videotape doesn't actually show all the episodes in their entirety. They only show five minute clips of each episode, or in the case of Thomas and Topsy and Tim, the whole thing, since they're already five minutes long. Well, that's a huge letdown. This was the first time I ever saw half of these shows. I didn't know what Sooty was, what Rainbow was, or The Magic House, or Topsy and Tim. Imagine my confusion when they suddenly end the episode, sometimes leaving things unresolved. A huge example of this is the next show in the lineup, The Magic House. Oh, and you might be wondering what exactly happens in the rest of the Sooty episode. Well... We are reintroduced to Little Cousin Scampy. He tricks Matthew into getting squirted with a water pistol. Matthew shows us around the shop and how the business works. Then a gag with a fountain pen. Sooty accidentally ordering 3,000 empty boxes. All of them traveling through Manchester via tram to collect their new transport. A glove puppet sized motorhome and an old tricycle for Matthew. More hijinks ensue. And Scampy cheekily sawed Matthew's bed and replaced it with some of the established boxes. <sighs> Come in and join us. We're so happy to be in the magic house. We're so happy to see you in the magic house. Did you ever watch the intro to a show thinking it's going to be an animated show only to find that it's actually in a different style? Usually live action. C-U-C-H-U-L. Unlike the other clips on this videotape, this one starts in the second third of the episode, meaning they don't show the actual beginning and they don't even show you the ending, which is especially insulting because it actually ends on a cliffhanger. And I can't find the full version of this episode anywhere on the internet. Yeah, the show is that forgotten and rare. Imagine how disappointing and confusing it is to a kid like me, who had never heard of The Magic House before, never had any other episodes on tape, and didn't even exist yet when the show was aired regularly on CITV. Anyways... 
Grandpa Clock is ill for some reason, and they all can't go to the seaside. Now let me think. What would make a sick person feel better? I know. Fruit. Fruit makes everybody feel better. Well, yeah, sort of. If you're talking about feelings and moods, but depending on the type of fruit or how poorly they are, not actually make them better. Wouldn't they need medicine and plenty of bed rest and stuff? Apples are good for you. Oranges are good for you. Pears are good for you. Bananas are good for you. Plums are good for you. That's the only one I don't actually like out of the six. I don't really like plums. But wait! I know the very thing to take to Grandpa Clock. It's what you always take to someone who isn't feeling well. Grapes! Well, he's not wrong. Oh, well, I hope you feel better soon. Thank you, Barney. <laughs> but worst of all, the sand gets into your food at the seaside. Oh, yeah, and there is this policeman teapot character. Oh, uh, PC pot. Ugh. Has been constantly complaining about how sad gets in everything. One of the downsides of a seaside holiday. I feel all jolly and happy and, ooh, very, very light-headed. Ooh, wow, look at that. Hey, oh, he must have eaten too many magic grapes. Oh, so are they actual magical grapes? I kept thinking that what they meant by magic grapes, I thought HD Well had magically teleported some normal grapes for Grandpa Clock. Based on what he said earlier about how fruit makes people feel better, he never said anything about magical fruit. How could we take him to the seaside like that? Sand gets into your sandwiches at the seaside. Are you even paying attention to what's happening, PC Plod? I mean, a uh, PC plot, the uh, pot, the uh, plot, the uh, pot, the uh, pot, the pot, the pot, the pot, the pot, the pot, the Grandpa Clock making this current music. I didn't even think he was a clock. A grandfather clock, maybe. <laughs> but his face doesn't look like a clock face. You know, no hands, no numbers, just a normal face. Um, uh, uh, oh no! The rope slipped out of my fingers! Poor Grandpa Clock! Oh, just look at him whizzing over the clouds! Thankfully, you haven't missed much on this one. Tiny is practicing his jumping inside the now horror movie cottage, but Tom and Tilly find it disturbing, and they ask Tiny to jump outside. And now I'll be translating everything I say here into French, because... <clears throat> Tiny, go away! What? I am away somewhere else. I'm outside now, aren't I? Yeah, but you're making too much noise. Can't you close the windows? Unless it's in the middle of July right now. Donkey, jump! Jump, 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 jump me up so high. Like this. Jump, jump, jump. Donkey, I don't think you can jump at all, can you? Yeah, this show has a limited budget, so they couldn't really afford having a professional donkey trainer. I'll go first, and I'll jump as high as... I'll jump as high as our house. <laughs> I can't even jump as high as this decking. Even the fittest, strongest athletes in the world can only jump to as high as these uneven bars. No one on this planet can jump that high. Jump into this! Go! Oh la 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 la! See, Tots? I jumped as high as our house. Mm, I don't think so. They were just playing around with the camera angles. Well, Tilly. 
scooped up as high as the highest tree. I can't even find the tree Tilly was trying to jump as high as. And I am going to jump as high as, um, the sky. Okay, a child's imagination can only take you so far. Jump, 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 jump into the sky! <laughs> And no, I'm not going to use the shooting star meme thing in this. One of you can do it if you like. Rainbow! Yes, I am aware that this isn't exactly the rainbow you all recognize. Well, there seemed to be this trend in the mid-90s of classic characters working at shops. I mean, Sooty and the gang are working at a shop of their own, and now the rainbow cast are working in a toy shop. Well, the whole cast minus one, Jeffrey Hayes, for reasons that will take too long for me to explain. Make a wish, look into a rainbow. Great, this one starts in the middle again. This is the first episode of this new series, and it's immediately established that Bungle, Zippy, and George are looking after a toy shop, although it's never been established what Mr. Top, the man who owns the shop, is doing. If he has been retired or is on a really long holiday, they get into a little squabble about who's doing what job, leaving Zippy very upset and very stroppy. One minute and 36 seconds past nine. Hey, Pagan. Well, you're supposed to open at nine o'clock, aren't you? Well, look, it's exactly one minute and 47 seconds past nine. Because I'm such a nerd, I timed it right as the clock struck nine up until now. I went over the other place. And uh -huh. oh, 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 it's nine o'clock. It's time to open the shop. <laughs> and 47 seconds past nine. She's actually right. For the mid-90s, that is really good editing. I hope you ate your Oh, Cleo. Hey, Cleo. Cleo, that's me. That's me name. Oh yeah, and Cleo here is the new character they introduced for this revival series. And I can't really think of a reason as to why. It can't be a gender equality thing, because the original series was beloved for 20 years at this point without a main female character. Oh wait, there was Jane, but... That's it. It can't be because they needed new characters. The show would have worked just fine if it was just with Bungle, Zippy, and George. So, whatever the case, I don't really have a problem with this. Cleo is fine, honestly. She's just alright in my book. Hear that? No. No. Precisely. That's because there's so much in it you can't get another coin in. Oh. Trouble is... You can't get one out either. There's usually a hole at the bottom of a piggy bank. There's a plug you put in the hole to keep the money in. If you want some money, you can pull the plug out and shake out the money you need. I can't believe I'm telling that to a children's show. Oh, how, why don't you shake it about a bit? Oh, oh. yeah, let me try. Yeah, right. oh. 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 yeah, those puppet hands don't have much grip. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear, Don't oh, dear. look so worried, Bungo. Oh. It got the money out anyway. It were a great idea. It was smashing! Insert Nigel Thornberry quote here. There, that's me money counted. Now, what can I buy? Be careful not to show Cleo any copyrighted toys. Strangely enough, just like the ones that are in the background of every episode. I would you like a nice, soft, cute, big bunny oh, rabbit. That's sweet, but mm. no. A rabbit character playing with a toy bunny rabbit. Kinda weird. Bungle and George have been telling me so much about you, Zippy. Oh, yes. I expect they've been telling you how horrible I am. No. Oh, it's I... just not fair. No. You oh. come along here no. and you've taken my best friends away. Oh. And now nobody wants to play with me anymore. No. It's not oh. fair. Because I had never seen the full version of this episode as a kid, this bit confused me. I thought Zippy snapping like that and saying, I expect they've been telling you how horrible I am, just came out of nowhere. 
You've got good old Cleo now, your new friend. You don't need me anymore. Oh, but we do. You're our best and most special friend in all the world. Am I? Yes! You know, I kind of think that Bungle has become the new Jeffrey, in that he has grown more responsible and more mature. I think all the characters have grown a bit more mature, some more than others. <laughs> Why else would Mr. Top, the man who owns the shop, ask them to run the shop and not someone else? They have grown enough to know how to take care of a toy shop, as well as themselves, since they live there and cook their own meals and etc. hi do! <sighs> a a piggy, piggy bank? bank? Oh, yeah. Take it! Oh, I shall take it! Wait a minute. A giant brown bear, a blue rabbit, a yellow character, an establishment appealing to children. This reminds me of. This place is brilliant! I eat! Oh. Marvelous! It's wonderful! No, it isn't! It's. Fantastic Cola! Fantastic Cola? I didn't know this was sponsored by Coca Cola. Fantastic Cola! <laughs> and it sure was a lucky thing that I discovered the original Rainbow series on Nick Jr. Classics a couple of years later. Seriously, that time slot was the very thing the modern child demographic needed. It had Rainbow, Portland Bill, Button Moon, Paddington Bear, Mr. Ben. We really need something like this back. Please? Jim. Rosie. Unlike all the other shows on this tape, they actually show clips from two episodes of Rosie and Jim. The first one is from an episode about eggs, where Fizzgog, the I mean, uh, John can live, sails off to see where eggs come from. Meanwhile, we see many examples of eggs. Dark eggs, eggs for making cakes, an egg and spoon race. They soon arrive at a farm full of free-range eggs, which is so big, it makes my own chicken coop look like a doll's house by comparison. Jim has a hard time believing that eggs come from chickens after Rosie sees so herself, and they soon head into inside an industrial part of the farm where we see them sorting the eggs and John soon goes off to buy a packet or two from the local grocers. Rosie? Yeah? Those eggs are the ones you buy at a shop. Yeah, so shop eggs do come from chickens. Yeah, <laughs> Too bad the clip starts off at the end of their journey through the life of an egg. Please, please lay me an egg. Lay an egg for dog. Please, please lay me an egg. An egg would make the happy. I wonder what John is doing right now. Long enough for the dolls to make their own chicken and play this little game. Ah, ah, good girl! Ooh. <laughs> Jim, she's laid an egg box! So Rosie and Jim have made their own Coco. She did it! She did it! <laughs> she laid an egg for Ducky! An egg for Ducky! <laughs> she laid a big plastic Easter egg for Duck. <laughs> See, Fizzgog, wooden ducks can have eggs. Yeah, they can. That was just a thought John had earlier. Oh. Hmm, maybe wooden ducks can lay eggs after all. Also, I like the fact that John just buys it. He is a children's writer after all. Well, too bad they cut that bit out. Oh, and of course, there's also an animated telling of John's amusing story. The other clip is about John traveling to Stratford-upon-Avon and seeing examples of stories being told, like children playing with toys, going past a theater, and a family watching television with some familiar music. Look at those people on their boat. They're watching television. You can read a story in a book, or you can watch it on television, like the people in that book. I bet this was a lot of children's first ever meta joke. John soon sees a puppet show being set up and decides to come and watch. Thankfully, we do get to see the whole show on this tape. Would you like to see me do a backwards wheelie as well? Yeah! Yes, 
some water back. We're going to show them how to do a backwards wheelie. Here we go. <laughs> oh, evil can evil eat your heart out. <laughs> this is already entertaining. I won't be long. Oh, uh, and uh, while I'm away, you lot, you keep an eye on the omelette for me, all right? <laughs> an omelette? Leaving an omelette out in the open street? What can possibly happen? Mm. Oh, in the way it is, where's that omelette? I do like omelette. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect a lion to pop up. I don't believe you. <laughs> There's no lion over there. So you stop playing games with me. <laughs> what? Who needs to wait for a pantomime to be in theatres when you can just see this for a pound? I'll tell you what I want you to do. Now, you're going to roar. Oh, roar. Well, like this. <laughs> Screw Pepper Pig, Paw Patrol, all those compilation videos that keep showing up in my recommended feeds. Kids need to see more of this. This is great. <laughs> Where's he gone, the stupid? That was great. Where'd you gone? Elvis, come here. Oh, no, no. They frighten me. I wonder if all of this was shot in one take. If it was shot through multiple takes, I bet the performer didn't like doing the same thing over and over again, and they would have put in a different group of kids every time to make it more genuine. <laughs> I wonder how many times the kids turned around and saw two characters they recognized from TV. <laughs> Um, what did he say? He said that too quickly. So, in the end, the puppeteer shows John how he does the show. Rosie and Jim play around with the puppet. They do their own puppet show back on the rag doll, and we end with another amusing story. Next! Finally, something else being shown through its entirety. Topsy and Tim were off to school after a fantastic summer holiday. <sighs> Post-summer holiday syndrome. We've all had it for years, and it feels awful, doesn't it? Topsy and Tim were going to join the bigger children at the primary school. They knew the primary school was a cheerful, friendly place. Better than secondary school, if you ask me. The primary school was much noisier than their old playgroup. Some of the bigger children did look very big. No wonder. Some of them are about 10 to 11 years old compared to these two six-year-olds. Each peg had a different picture by it. Remember your special picture, said Miss Terry, and then you will know your own peg. My primary school had laminated tags with our names on them. That's honestly easier than trying to remember a random picture. Tim's pig had a picture of a black umbrella. He wasn't sure he could remember an old umbrella. Girls always get the best things, grumbled Tim. Not always. Mummy took Topsy and Tim into their new classroom. What's that kid doing under the table? Couldn't he find somewhere more sensible? When they felt like looking at books and pictures, they sat on the carpet in a quiet corner. This is the most well-behaved primary school I've ever seen. Dinner was served by two jolly ladies, Mrs. Knitting and Mrs. Pie. At least, Topsy and Tim thought those were their names. Well, these are fictional characters, so they could be right. It's natural to give these sort of characters names you would hear from a Happy Families game. Topsy was astonished to see Tim eat all his greens. I'm astonished too. Don't school dinners usually taste worse than shopboard dinners? Or maybe younger ones always get the best things. Afternoon school was more like their old playgroup. Miss Terry gathered all the children around her. They sang some clever songs with actions. <laughs> I can still remember a couple of school songs from my youth. Completely ridiculous ones. And they are the only good school memories that I have. Every single other thing I did in primary and secondary school, I regret doing. Can I restart my life? Tim's peg was empty. Never mind, Tim, said Miss Terry. This often happens. I expect someone knocked your things down and put the back on the wrong peg by mistake. 
Here's your jacket, called Andy Anderson. So what happened to the jacket then? Did you enjoy your first day at big school? Asked Mummy on the way home. Of course we did, said Topsy and Tim. But you are not going to enjoy the next ten years of your life. They are going to get complicated, boring and stressful. <laughs> oh boy, this is a big one. <laughs> the world has held great heroes, as history books have been. But never a name went down to fame compared with Adam Jones. Oh, hey, it's that same song that they've used in the original movie. The ten of them at Oxford know all this to be known. But none of them know half as much as intelligent Mr. Toad. But never a name went down to fame compared with Adam Toad. You might want to grab a snack for this next recap. It's long and complicated and you may need to pause a few times. What they show here are two clips from the beginning and end of a 50 minute special episode of The Wind in the Willows that was shown in between seasons 4 and 5 of the show called A Tale of Two Toads. It all starts with Toad having another craze, rowing along the riverbank on a steam powered boat. We then see a mysterious figure in the hedgerows who turns out to be Isambard Beerbomb Toad, an actor and a car man who has agreed to work with the weasels to kick Mr. Toad out of Toad Hall, and this first clip features the first step in their plan. Well, you were clever enough to not pay attention to the riverbank. Good evening. Yes, good evening. And if this is anything to do with you, I. It... <laughs> what? You're me. I mean, you can't be, because I'm me. I wonder how many toads there are in this show or the story in general. There are multiple weasels, many moles, rabbits, and other creatures, but we have only seen one toad until now, as if Mr. Toad is the only toad in the whole country. On to our new home, eh? <laughs> Zachary is a mod. <laughs> our new home. Now then, there's a huge chunk of the episode that they cut off the tape, so... <gasps> The Weasels and Isambard capture Mr. Toad and lock him up in a wine cellar. Isambard impersonates Mr. Toad and says rude comments to Mole, Ratty and Badger as Mr. Toad. The three of them start to avoid each other at first, but after an incident with a few younglings, they soon realize what is happening and assume that Toad isn't like Toad at all. Meanwhile, Toad has a cunning plan to escape from the Weasels' grasp by disguising himself as a downstairs maid, just like how he escaped from prison as a washerwoman, but it doesn't work this time, and the weasels force him to play the role of maid. Badger and the others plan to sneak into Toad Hall via the secret passage and free Mr. Toad. They then have the clever idea to hide in the wine cellar, wait for Isambard to appear, knock him out, dress him up in the maid outfit, and tie him up, tricking the weasels into thinking that he is Mr. Toad. But Isambard manages to snap some sense into the weasel's head and take tells them that it's all been a trick. As Toad and the others return to Toad Hall, they find Isambard free, in Toad's same clothes, and putting on his voice, and only his voice. <sighs> I sure hope you've paid attention to all that, otherwise this second clip consisting of the episode's climax won't make any sense. After all, it never made sense to me. I'm Toad! Oh no you're not! There'll only ever be one Toad, and that's me! Me? Oh, Badger, which one is Toad? I'm not sure, Mole. I'm not sure. As you can see, I've made things easy for everyone watching this, just in time for the climax. And boy, is it an enjoyable one. Help! Help! <laughs> Smart thinking coming from Mr. Toad. <laughs> Ah! 
I'm not gonna lie, this scene is just as epic as the great fight scene seen in the original movie, and it's much more interesting without the name tags I'm showing here. Plus, David Jason voicing the same character twice must be tough work. <laughs> Oh. Uh. Ah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Bufo. Oh. For the longest time, I never understood what he said there. But now that I have recently watched the whole series, I now understand. Semper Bufo. The Toad family motto. Semper Bufo. Always a toad. I doubt that isn't bad, well versed as he was would have known that. And now we come to the final part of this tape, which is... Oh dear god. Okay, I have recently watched the whole videotape which this clip is from, and I have so much to say about the whole thing. Not just the three nursery rhymes that they show here, oranges and lemons, the farmers in the dell, and here we go around the mulberry bush, but... I've already wasted enough of your time with this video alone, so... I'm going to talk about this tape in another video. Now, I've never actually watched this videotape as a kid. I've only ever seen the three mentioned nursery rhymes, but there is so much unintentional wrong with this whole tape that I can't help talking about it. So, do expect that video in the future, but for now... Um, Semper Bufo, I guess.